Alex Liam Willis, Oriel College, and the second elected member of the Oxford Union Secretary Committee to continue the case for the opposition tonight. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Madam President, for the privilege to speak here this evening amongst a lineup of such esteemed guests. Um, I, before I begin, I should clarify I'm not here today as a presidential candidate. Um, <laughs> I'm not Chase Coke, elusive fourth choice, um, but I do hope to live up to the um, reputation, as Sorry gave, of the attack dog of the union. Um, so I feel this motion puts me, and perhaps fellow honourable members uh, among, amongst the audience, in a kind of awkward position. Um, on one hand, I consider myself to be a progressive. Um, I'm a strong proponent of redistributing wealth from an incredibly powerful and wealthy international class of billionaires um, to communities all over the world, as Charlie talked about. Uh, living in dreadful poverty. Um, yet, on the other hand, our side of the debate could be deemed as the nasty side, uh, the side tasked with defending billionaires against the principled and justified concerns of progressives. Um, so to begin, I would firstly uh, like to clarify that this is not the case. Far from defending the interests of billionaires, this evening's opposition is more than willing to accept the idea that billionaires ought to do far more in alleviating suffering worldwide. Um, in fact, I totally encourage it. If any billionaires are listening, please do, please feel free. That would be great. Um, however, what is more difficult for us to accept is a blanket moral adjudication on a group of people based on the intrinsic property of how much money is in their bank balance, um, rather than relational aspects such as how they choose to spend that money. Um, over the course of my argument this evening, I would therefore like to make two points. Firstly, I would like to emphasise the relationship with morality in action rather than with morality and a number in somebody's bank account. Surely, ladies and gentlemen, it is the case that morality is far more nuanced and complex than an arbitrary cut-off point between 999 million and one billion pounds. My second point is an appeal to those of you who, like me, may deem yourself to be a progressive and consider yourself wholeheartedly supportive of the premise that billionaires are not doing nearly enough. My appeal and my sincere belief is that making generalised moral judgments of this kind is overall entirely unhelpful and perhaps even detrimental um, to our overall goal of eradicating poverty and vastly reducing uh, inequality worldwide. Um, so let's begin. Um, for hundreds and hundreds of years, philosophers such as Plato, Hobbes, Kant, Mill, even Peter Singer here, um, have debated what it is to be moral. Um, suffice to say that not all of these philosophers agree on the key components of moral philosophy, and they differ according to schools of virtue ethics, utilitarianism, uh, deontology, etc. Um, however, one thing that nearly all philosophers agree on is that morality inherently says something about your relation as a moral agent with other agents around you and with your relationship with the outside world. Indeed, it would be unclear what morality was if it did not do this. As such, any philosopher given a description of a person in purely intrinsic qualities rather than alongside a relational context would struggle to classify this person as either immoral or moral without being given any more information. They might be able to make inferences, if said person was wearing a black and white striped jumper and a balaclava, they might be able to make a guess. But, ladies and gentlemen, until they, until they saw them prise open the side window and set off the burglar alarm, they wouldn't be able to assuredly know. And in many ways, this is similar to the distinction between someone's ownership of a billion pounds and the actions and how they choose to spend that billion pounds. Whilst it intuitively seems like a strange conclusion to come to, it would therefore be naive to think that morality could be determined according to a black and white bank account balance um, any more than it could according to a black and white jumper that someone is wearing. Opponents of this argument may say that be, being a billionaire is itself a special kind of quality, or that it is not intrinsic at all, but rather implies that action has already taken place. The argument would go as follows. Being a billionaire implies that somewhere on the line, some sort of immoral behaviour has been necessary to amass such a large amount of wealth in the first place. Some backstabbing here, some tax avoidance there, a healthy bit, of money laundering or bribery if necessary. People using this sort of counter-argument, they point towards dodgy Russian oligarchs with unexplained wealth. And I'm inclined to say that for some situations, they may be completely right. However, we must consider that we're talking here about all billionaires, simply by virtue of them being billionaires rather than by the actions that they've taken. There will therefore always be counter-examples to this sort of counter-argument. For example, the rags to riches story of JK Rowling who became the world's first billionaire actor, author, rather. <laughs> I don't think it is the case, or at least I hope it isn't, that her Harry Potter riches were earned off the back of any dodgy dealings with tax avoidance or any involvement 
with Russian oligarchs. Um, J.K. Rowling is also a great example in highlighting the moral philanthropic acts that can be conducted by billionaires and can demonstrate why billionaires are not inherently, in, inherently immoral. In 2012, Rowling became one of the first persons to fall off the Forbes billionaires list due to philanthropy, having donated hundreds of millions to effective charities. Not only does it self seem to be a moral act, but also it highlights the arbitrariness of the billionaire limits set by the motion. Are we expected to believe that Rowling could have been moral up until the point she became a billionaire, immoral thereafter, and then moral again once she dropped off the Forbes billionaire list? It seems like a very strange proposition. This seems to me to be a clumsy and perhaps even a lazy way to define morality. As, as such, we should try and stick firmly to observing behaviour and action when assessing morality, rather than qualities independent of action. My second point is for those people who need convincing of progressive reasons um, to be on the side of this debate tonight. My point is this, it is, simple not, it is simply not helpful for the progress of goals such as the eradication of poverty and the lowering of wealth inequality to charge a large group of wealthy and powerful people is immoral. Whether we like it or not, billionaires are an important and in fact a vital component of social change. Currently, it is their dollars that are partially funding effective charities in reducing malaria, in increasing vaccination in the third world, in increasing the supply of drinking water in the third world, and so forth. Whilst their contribution may not at this time be enough, and I completely agree with that, charging them with immorality does not encourage cooperation with future socio-economic advancements. If we are one day able to create a public consensus for wide-scale political and economic reform, it will be the dollars and the pounds of billionaires that fund our redistributive institutions. It would therefore be better for everyone if we could achieve this change through cooperation and with gratefulness, rather than encouraging hostility which could drive billionaires out of our tax base or which could cause progressives to be seen as spiteful or to be seen as jealous of success. If we pass this motion, it could therefore send a message that we do not want billionaires in the arena of social change and not having the cooperation of such a powerful stakeholder in society could have the side effect of making that social change all the more difficult in the first place. So to conclude my argument this evening, I therefore encourage you all to vote against this motion. Whilst the proposition may be able to attest the immorality of individual billionaires such as Jeff Bezos and rightfully may be able to point to wealth inequality and poverty across the world, it would set a confusing precedent to categorise morality based not on action but on properties independent of action. Whilst I have no doubt that the proposition has good intentions, I also feel that passing this motion and openly categorising all billionaires as immoral could also be detrimental to important cooperation over shared goals of poverty reduction and increasing, decreasing wealth inequality. Thank you all for listening. Thank you. Thank you.